Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to edit and change and read uh, yells which are found in commands. So first off we need to find commands.java which is found in your source, com, rs, then game, and then in player and content you should find commands.java. By the way I'm going to have to talk slightly quieter in this video than I normally do because other people are sleeping and I don't want to wake them up. Uh, I'm just releasing this video quickly before I go on holiday for a month as it won't be almost two months since I have released a video. So anyway, once you're in commands, scroll all the way down to I think it's line 3000 something. I already bookmarked it, not 3000. 1539 where you should see if player get username equals ignore case can zenith. Okay, so now if you haven't already looked at um, my other video where I describe and show you about the syntax of Java and stuff like that, then I suggest you go watch that. Otherwise, I'm going to give you a brief explanation of it right now. Um, but that video will help you a lot with reading all the different stuff. But anyway, you will see this. This is all your yells. It is underneath whatever this is. Underneath the send yell. Uh, I forgot what they're called, module or something like that. So it's underneath that. What this pretty much means is if the player get the username equals ignoring the case, so ignoring if it's uppercase or lowercase, and it equals king space zenith, then it will send whatever is in between these two brackets. So if you notice, when you click this bracket, it will highlight this red bracket. That means that's where the command closes. So pretty much that whole thing there is one yell. It has the if statement, what the if statement is checking, and then the two brackets which hold what the code is. So if you want to make it clearer of what command, or what different yell is, um, just go through, click the bracket after the if statement, then go down to the bottom one, add a few spaces. This could just be handy just to add, or to make it a little bit easier to view if you're not used to viewing stuff all bunched up. So, now that we have them a bit separated, it's easier to view, like I said, and now we can look more in depth in what this stuff does. So, pretty much, what it does is it's checking if the player with the username is equal, ignoring the case, like I said before, to whatever is in between these two quote marks, King Zenith, then it will do whatever is inside this bracket. So what it's just saying now is that it will send a game message and whatever all this stuff is. But what this actually is, is it's actually one big line of code. It's just defaultly indented like that. So if we go back, and then delete that back, and add a space. You don't need to add a space, which is better. Then that is the full one piece of code. It's pretty much a real massive as long game message. If you have been editing other pieces of code, you might have seen these game messages. But it's just indented real weirdly. Well, I find it real weird to read. But if you want to indent it like this, it's a lot cleaner and it takes up a lot less space. So, like I said before, if you haven't checked out the syntax guide, I'll explain it a little bit in depth, but whatever's in between these two curly brackets, there's an opening bracket, which is that way, and then the corresponding closing one, which is just like the closer. And now everything inside it is what the code does. So, to read these commands where it says like player.get something or player.get packets send game message, like nine, I found that like nine times out of ten, it's whatever the file first, and then the module in that file. So, for example, in player dot get username, it will be in the player dot java folder or file. So, if we find that, which is in player, and then grab player, and you don't have to do this by the way. I'm just trying to explain something. So, if you see player dot something, it's the player file, so player dot java, and then if we search for get username and he, oh, we just missed it, I'm pretty sure it was just up, down, maybe, yeah, see, public string, get username with brackets, so as you can see, that fits right there perfectly, it's, yeah, see, so it's pretty much in the player file, player.java, and then the module get username, which says, if the string is get username, then it returns, which means, I think, which means, sends information back to whatever is reading it, it sends back the username. So pretty much what it says is if the username is equal to ignoring the case of King Zenith in this situation, then it will do whatever is inside this stuff. So, like this one, 
players, which is players up here, so as it says somewhere, for players, it will be world.get players, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm explaining this too well, if it's not, then I don't know, I'll leave some links to skip it. But um, where it says players, it pretty much means, uh, well, up here it changes player, I think, to players. So instead of writing player, oh, it changes world.getplayers, this thing here, into just players. So it saves you having to write world.getplayers all the time. So then if you type down players down here, then it will be doing world.getplayers instead of typing that, if that makes sense. I don't think that makes sense. But hopefully you understand where I'm coming from. So say, um, I'll try to explain this. I don't really know how to explain this. But, um, pretty much what it does is instead of writing the whole world.getplayers in those two brackets, uh, you can write that instead. So if we change this to gunit or something, I don't actually know what a gunit is, but, um, and then we could change that to gunit, it would still be world.getplayers, but we can just write gunit instead. But we're not going to do that because that's just a bit silly. But hopefully you understand what that means. If not, then just forget about it. But pretty much what this does now is it gets all the players that are logged in and then it sends them a game message which is call and the call tag there's two there's three I think types of tags you can do there's call then there's shed which is shade and then there's IMG so what this pretty much is is it means color or well obviously a call and then it will be like call equals and then it should have um, a six letter um, simple thing, or six digit code. Now what this is, is it's an HT, oops, it's an HTML code. Um, so if you go onto Google, not Facebook, and type in HTML color codes, um, and then, I, I use this, you don't have to, but you can go to this one, um, and then if you go down here and find any one you like, so say we like this pink, oh, I actually think the pink's default, so if, say we like this green, we grab this color, the 01DFO1. You can do that for any color in this, it just shows you the code down there. And if we replace this col with that color, then it changes the thing to that color. So say we put that in there, and we know that's green. So since this col tag is open, it needs to have a close tag, which is just another col, I think. No, wait, actually, you don't need to, that's HTML. Ignore that, I think. Oh, actually, sometimes I don't think you need it in the, if you're doing another call tag. But if you want to close the tag, you can go call like that. So as you can see down here, it's like slash call after call. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, don't worry, guys. So um, hopefully I'm explaining this well. It's a bit hard to explain because I don't really know the correct Java stuff. But pretty much what it's saying down here is it's saying because um, if you have a call tag or any tag, anything after that tag will have the properties of the tag, if that makes sense. So anything after, say I have this call tag which has equals that light green color. And then say if I say this text will appear green. Since, I, since it is after this color tag, it will be that color. But say if I added another call tag which equals um, if, 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 all capitals though, should be capitals. So if, 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 um, then everything after this will be red and not green anymore, if that makes sense. So what this pretty much does is it sends every player that's online owner with uh, whatever color is in there, and then it sends image with image number four. You can find those images by going into a sprite editor, and then I think it's going down to list 1945 or something like that and finding your sprites, but I'll cover that in another video. Um, and then after it displays that image, it will display the player's who's yelling username in this color, and then it will stop. Oh no, then it will add um, the message, whatever they're sending, in this color as well, and then it will stop. So hopefully that makes sense, just gonna recap it real quickly, um, deleting all this. So it says if the player's username ignoring the case is equal to whatever's in here, then it will get all the players that are online, send them a game message, send them whatever this is in that color, and then send after that message 
well after owner whatever that whatever is in between there um, after that it will send image 4 and then it will send the username in that color and then it will send the message in whatever color is that so if you want to get fancy and after the color tag you can add a shad tag which I don't think this is I'm not too sure if this is correct but I'm just going with the flow and then do if 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 and then do that and then you can close the shed like that I think and it should add a little bit of a red background to it just a slight off centered red so you get sort of that double double color text going on but you can just mix and match with this stuff I mean you can delete the shads uh, and you can just like change this to whatever you want you could just be like gg blah, blah, and then it will print that in that color and it's still the same so pretty much just follow the same layout which whatever is in between these two quote marks is what it will send when you yell so if you don't have message it won't send the message you could send the message twice if you want to just put another plus message and pretty much that's how it works but okay going down now what are we at time wise oh shit 10 minutes getting quite long um reading downwards um it, the, well whenever something reads a java code it always reads from top to bottom so if you have so the yells are laid out like this it has well normally they're laid out like this it has all the custom name yells first and then it has the rights and the status yells afterwards so since it reads it down it checks if king zenith if the person yelling is king zenith if it's not them which is with the else if then it checks if the player is sub which i think is super donator but i'm not actually too sure and if they're not then it checks if they are rights one if they aren't it checks if they're rights two if they aren't it checks if their username is equal to whatever's in there but since nothing is in there it won't be that and then it keeps going on checking each thing which is in between these brackets until it finds the correct one that the player is so say if the player is rights two um hang on say if the player is rights seven which is the owner um, it will check if they are King Zenith, which they're not. They're not Slap. They're not Rights 1. They aren't Rights 2. They aren't that person. They aren't that person. They aren't that person. They aren't that. They aren't that. They aren't that. Then it will come down to here where it says, Else if the player gets Rights as 7, which is what they are, then it will send them uh, this game message, which is Donator for some reason. But you need to change that possibly. Um, but if, it, if someone's Rights 7, it will send this as the yell, whatever is in between these two brackets. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, one thing you do need to change though, I think, is to change uh, the is donator to move it, I think it's possibly below um, this one. I'm not actually too sure if you have to, but I think that's what you need to do. Um, because it will check if the owner We'll check. It. Oh, actually, no, you no, 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 no. What you do is you need to move this right seven. Make sure you take the brackets and everything up above the uh, donator status wherever we just put that, which is gone now. Hang on, sorry guys, sorry about this. Okay, sweet. So whatever. Um, so go down, and what you need to do, if you notice when you're an owner, and you yell, and you have a donator yell, and an owner yell, I'm pretty sure the fix for that is moving this whole piece of code up here, including this little bracket, up to where it says, um, if, uh, if player, if, um, exclamation mark player is donator, which means if the player is not donator, and so just chuck that up there, and it should fix your problem, I think. Make sure all your brackets line up properly, or else you'll get errors. And then after you compile, it should work. Um, but moving that above the donator thing, just not, I think will not make it send the donator yell and the owner yell, if you're owner. Um, but if it doesn't, then I'm sorry, and you can just skip it. Um, just read the comments quickly, and if people are saying that doesn't work, then just don't do it. Uh, I try explain things to the best that I can, but I don't think I explain this one very well. Uh, it is quite a long video. I normally try oh shit, it's getting real long. I normally try to keep it under ten minutes, but yeah, I don't know. It just got real way too long.
So thanks for watching and please comment, rate and subscribe. Remember to check the quick links um, for the skipping bits.